Today we want to crown it all on still the same message on relationship. And I want to speak on the secrets of keeping relationship. The secret of what? Keeping relationship. It takes a secret. There is a saying that if you see two friends that have been together for 10 years and they are still together, it's because one decided to be a fool. One decided to be what? A fool. One decided to be a fool. Amen, somebody. Amen. That is why their friendship has lasted. If two of them are decided to be wise, nobody will let anything go. If two of them are decided to be vengeful, smart, intelligent, the thing wouldn't have lasted. And I can tell you categorically that it is not only in friendship, but in all form of relationship. It takes a secret for the relationship to last. When you discover the relationship of uh, the secret of keeping relationship, then your relationship around you will begin to last. I can tell you categorically the reason why some of you have not been able to bring anybody to church is that you don't have good relationship with people. Who's your friend? How many friends have you had in the last three years? This one is not good. Go. I'm not even your friend. I'll start a new one. Go. This one, go. This one, go. This one, go. If you are making, if you are cooking food and you are using firewood, if you say this wood is not good, you throw it away. That other wood look crooked, you remove it. This other wood is not burning very well, you take it off. By the time you know, your fire will die. The fire of your friendship has been dying because you have been removing them instead of working on them. Am I speaking with somebody? You have decided to be a lone ranger. You have decided to walk alone. You have decided to do things alone by yourself. As for me, I don't like friends. I don't have friends. So I'm walking alone. You will die alone. Did somebody hear what I just said? If you walk alone, you will die alone. Somebody said this is too hard. It's very it's the hardest truth. It's the hard truth. You will suffer alone. You will go through pain alone. You will go through difficulties of life alone. If you decided to walk alone. The God who created us understand the value of friendship. And from Genesis to Revelation, he did not create them one alone. He said, it is not good that man should be alone. Adam, he has seen the struggle of Adam alone. I will create a helper for him. That is why God put us in a family. That is why God created diverse relationships. There is a relationship of parents, relationship of siblings, relationship of friends, relationship of uh, working relationship, before we now have relationship with God. God himself is interested in having relationship with us. If God value relationship that much, then why are you saying it is you alone that you want to walk? 
And that's why I pity some of the men or women who feel that immediately they get married, it is me and my husband alone. All the friends the husband have before must be cut off. All the friends the wife has before must be cut off. I don't want to see you around anybody. Then you will suffer alone. A day will come where one of the friends will have said, oh boy, what you are doing is not good. But because you have cut them off, everybody mind their business. A day where it will come where you could have called someone of your wife friend and say, talk to your friend. And you will not have anybody to talk to. Because you have tell her, cut everybody off. And you have cut everybody off and you are now lonely. I am a lonely. <laughs> I am on my own. <laughs> You'll be lonely. Some of you are here, you are very lonely. Because you don't have a good relationship with people. Is somebody understanding where I'm going this morning? It's only one person that answered me. <laughs> relationship is a state of connectedness. How you are connected with each other. Between God and people and between people and people. That's relationship. How you are connected. State of connectedness. How are you connected with God? As much as we connect to God or with God, we also need to connect with one another. It is only me and my God. I am only serving my God. I go to church. I talk to my God. I finish, carry my bag, and go home. You are doing a mistake. Make a mistake of your life. It's a terrible mistake. If you don't have a good friend, how will you invite somebody to church? That's why you are lonely in your seat. Tell your neighbor, that's why you are lonely in your seat. If you have come with your friend, they will have sit beside you and you'll be jolly while the service is going. And you continue to be lonely until you find somebody. That's it. It is the no gospel truth. How many of your friends can you say, I'm doing something. Charlie, I want to see you in my house. I want to see you in my house. Some of you, you are like what the Bible says. A big man was doing a party because he has no relationship. Nobody show up. He has to go and pay money. I bet come and eat. Oh. Give them money. Come and eat. I'm doing party. If some of you is doing party now, people cannot come because of you. You have to tell your friend who is a popular jingo to help you bring his friend. Tell your neighbor, pastor is talking. <laughs> By you alone, you will cook food for 50. You and your children will be the one to eat it. Because your neighbor's self will not come and eat. You are living in the street. Nobody knows you. You drive in. You drive out. Put a big sign called beware of dog. Not, not even bingo. Assertion. Doberman. Mastiff. You put it there. Not to concern you with your neighbor. Not to concern you with the people in the street. You don't even know the name of the next person living beside you. And you say you are a Christian. Show me your relationship with people. And I will tell you the kind of Christian you are. Somebody say amen. amen. Shake your neighbor and say amen. Amen. You are known in the street to be a cantacross person. You have fought almost everybody. How do you call yourself a Christian? You are fighting A, you are fighting B, you are fighting C, you are fighting D. 
you don't know the secrets. And today, God will show you the secrets. God will what? Show you the secrets. God will reveal the secrets unto you. Look at it. Good relationship provide joy. Good relationship provide what? Joy. Have you been around the people that you like? Automatically joy flow in you. You judge your very well. You jolly very well. You rap very well. You have good rapport among yourself. Just try it. Surround yourself by three good people. And decide to spend your day with them. And see how joy will be flowing in you. The reason why you are not, you are growing older than your age is that you don't have good people around you to give you joy. You are 18 inside, but your body outside is like 60. There is no joy in your life. You alone cannot make yourself happy. I did my corner and making myself happy. Show me how you can make yourself happy. Open the bottle of a brandy, put a bottle there, be drinking alone. You won't drink till they have before you begin to be sorrowful. Who is the drinker here? Open one big bottle of brandy or cognac. Or do any kind of uh, that make you high. Anything that make you high. I'm talking about spirits now. That make people high. When you put it down and you put glass there, you know that things that make you happy. By the time you drink to the half, you suddenly begin to be sorrowful. Because something in you want to pop, but there's nowhere to let it go. Carry a beggar, put it in front of you, say, let us drink. You know that you'll be conversing and you'll be laughing. Because two of you are drinking. You eat alone, you die alone. You walk alone, you die alone. Begin to build relationship. Whoever is telling you that friends are not good is lying. I can tell you good friends are good. Surround yourself with good people. Oh, me, I'm not lucky with friends, so all the friends I'm getting is a bad. You to check yourself, you are bad. You attract each other. You can't be good and God keeps sending you bad people all your life. I'm not saying bad people may not come, but I think God will give you comfort among them. That you say, ah, as for this, my friend, it's better than the rest. But if you don't want to know, you don't want to hear, you don't want to see. You don't want to make friends. You think it's about you alone. It's dangerous. Good relationship bring love. You feel loved. You feel loved. Hallelujah. People that know me know that I cannot function alone. I become miserable when I'm alone. Few months that I don't have PA in my office, I feel like my life, when I come to this office, I just enter my car and go away. Because nobody to talk to. But the moment I get a new PA, I call and I say, this office has come alive. At least you will not be there. Adani Konje. Adani Konmu. Adani Konbe nu pa lobi e woro. Olu wa ma shemini Adani Konbe le wo. He said, he said, you live alone. You eat alone. You drink alone like a rabbit. May God not make you be someone that lives in the house alone. Are you not taking clue from people that they will have died rotting? It is the smell that the neighbor will know that that person has died by one month. 
You pretended that you are sick now and say how many people will come and greet you. That's to tell you the kind of relationship you are. Oh, Kojo, I'm not feeling well. God will bless you. You two, you don't look for people when they are not well. Why will I come? Ama, I'm not feeling okay. May God help you. But there are some people, if they hear that they are sick like this, everybody gather around them. The love from people heal them immediately. Check the quality of your friendship. Check the quality of your relationship. Check the quality whether you know how to keep relationship. Some of you, it's not that you don't have people, but you can't keep them. That's the point I'm going. You can't keep friendship. You can't keep relationship. In no time you are spoiled this one. In no time you are spoiled another one. In no time you are spoiled this one. In no time you are spoiled another one. This person do me something. This person do you something. You get it? If you don't get it, forget it. <laughs> you be alone and you die alone. You get it? <laughs> if you don't get it, forget it. You have to get it too. That you can't be alone. Just pretended that today I'm not going to work. I want my friend to come and greet me. And see who will come. Anywhere Christ went, people are following him. Because he's a good person. He knows how to keep good relationship. Hallelujah. So I'll be showing us secret this morning on how to keep good relationship. And I keep telling us that good relationship, it brings love, it brings joy, it brings healing. 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 When somebody is sick and good people come around them, it brings healing. Healing of emotion, healing of heart, healing of things. You know, I don't know. Me, I've seen good friends in my life. I have good friends in my life that they give me joy. I mean, I mean I'm a pursuit of hope, but I'm not God. Sometimes I feel like giving up myself, but they are the one who come in. You have been doing well. You can't break at this point. And by the time I finish talking to them, I feel healed in my spirit. I feel energized in my spirit. I feel more. The day that I don't feel like, I feel like talking, okay, I just call this one. Whatever they are doing, they drop it, say, let us talk. Let us talk. I sent a message to one of my friends in UK that I need to talk. And he told me, he said, he has to abandon all his meeting, tell his boss there is an emergency. He said, I want to hear what you want to say because you are more important to me. Amen, somebody. I'm not going to, this are just some of the few benefits of it. It provides that encouragement. Encouragement. You'll be encouraging each other. You are the one thinking about it. You are the one viewing it from your own. The reason why we make multiple mistakes is because you are the one thinking about the matter alone. You don't have anybody to say that. Oh, see this. At least I have about four people that when I want to do something, I consult them. What do you feel about this? What do you feel? What do you feel? What do you feel? But you, all the people you have around you is I am a tanga. You cannot even share your story. You cannot even tell anybody you are traveling. Maybe they will kill you before you get there. You are living in fear. You are living in bondage. You can't even share anything with anybody. In these days where going around alone is very dangerous, that we have been encouraging people, if you are going out, test somebody. This is where I am. That is where you are. That is where you are. You cannot tell people that, oh, I'm in, I'm in Kempiski can 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 eating. I'm here going to look with some people. You cannot do it. Because maybe you think that they will show up and come and eat. So it's better, let me do it. And if the people you are there take you away, that's why nobody will know where you go. 
Who can you entrust your life with? If you don't have anybody like that, you are in problem. Nobody knows your secret. You don't know anybody's secret. Then they will use it against you. And let me tell you, there's nothing secret in this world. It's only your time has not come. Things that you think you have done and it's gone a long time, somebody knew and it, it, you will be shocked that when the person will tell you. It's not everybody who is bad. It's not everybody who is evil. Find trusted people in your life. This one is not about prayer. It's not about fasting. It's about what God has said you should do. These are physical things. I keep telling you, when you pray to God, God use human being for you. So there is importance of having good friendship. In the book of Job, Job chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says, when Job had problem, his friend came to him. Job chapter 2 verse 11, look at it. When Job had problem, give me, let's read. Give me Job chapter 2 verse 11. Everybody turn your Bible there. The book of Job. Somebody to be in that place and be giving me the screenshot of the Bible. Job chapter 2. Are you there? Verse 11. Let us read together. Now, when Job's three friends heard of this evil that was come upon him, they came each one from his own place, Eliphaz, the Tamanite, and Bildad, the Shushite, and so far, the Namahite. For they had made an appointment together to come to condole with him and to comfort him. To condole with him and to do what? To comfort him. To condone with him and to do what? To comfort him. When Job had issue, his friends come from different places to come and comfort him. Good relationship bring comfort. Good relationship brings what? Comfort. It brings comfort. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. He said, A friend who stick closer than a brother. A friend who stick what? Well, closer than a brother. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, he said, Iron sharpened iron. It is when you have friends like you that keep encouraging you to go far. Amen, somebody. Who's your friend? Some of you have known you for so long. I don't know your friend. You are low ranger. I and I. Who is your friend? I'm challenging you. Show me your friend. Apart from family, who can I call your friend? Did anybody here know my friend? At least you've seen me with one or two. Me too. Show me your own. We are doing that challenge in this household. Everybody, you post your friend on Hopa's page. This is my best friend. Post your friend there. Let's know who's your friend. John, who's your friend? Sister Gloria, who is your friend? 
that we can say that this is our friend who And his friends came and comforted him. Job, the millionaire, has a friend. You, the persuasive, you are afraid to have a friend. Job, the billionaire, has friends. You that has nothing, you are afraid. You know, if I have friends, the, the friends are not good. They will take what I have. What do you have? What do you have? That two by four house you are living, or two by four car you are riding. That's what they are coming to. For. What do you have? Billionaires have friends that comfort him. And you, you don't have anybody that comforts you. And you are not a billionaire. All his friends came from different places to sit down with him. If not, Job will have think and think and die. No matter how strong you are, when you are in difficulty, if you don't have good people around you that comfort you, you will have hypertension, you will have high blood pressure, you will have uh, so many sickness. You will be depressed. You will be depressed. There was a pastor, one of a pastor friend of uh, not my, a friend, friend. Oh, he's also a pastor. His wife divorced him. And he hated him so much to the extent that he started drinking. This pastor drank uh, until one day he died. Nobody goes to him. Nobody knows. One will enter his house. He's preaching to everybody when he was there. But no, he has no friends. He has no friends. He has no friends. I have many friends here. I call them. Call them. This is where I am. This is where I'm going. This is. That's why I'm not alone. Hallelujah. But you, you want to be holier than me. Your pastor. And not see the value of friends. Good friends. There are bad food, there are good food. There are bad drinks, there are good drinks. The same thing, there are bad people, there are good people too. Everybody can be bad. And you can't because you drink water today and it goes the wrong way. You won't drink water again. Somebody will betray you. Somebody will embrace you. Somebody will hurt you. Somebody will help you. They came to him. Hallelujah. Iron sharpness, iron. Who is sharpening you? Who is sharpening your mind? Who do you rub mind with? Because when you see things from your own perspective alone, you will not always be accurate. I pray God will give you good friends. I pray you will be able to keep good friends as well. You will not miss the people that you should meet. Somebody did not hear what I said. There are some people in your life that you should not miss them. You should meet them at all costs. Because they are good people. But because of your attitude, you have missed good people. The people you should have missed, that your past should not have met them, they are the ones you are meeting. I pray for you today by the power and the authority of God that God will give you good relationship. Good people will surround you. Good people will surround you. Good people will look at you. People, good people will come your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. He said two are better than one. Two are better than one. Two are better than 
one. Two are better. Two are what? Better. Two are better than one. It's good. You are here. I have never seen somebody, some of you go, this is my friend. You that are even interpreting Uncle Charles. Where is your friend? Frank is your friend. This man. Richard is your friend. Yeah, down for Nana. Is he your friend? <laughs> or you're picking me in the member right now? From this moment, is your friend. <laughs> comfort. I've never seen anybody come here to look for you. I'm looking for comfort. Hmm? No single person. If you're a foreigner, we talk that maybe your friend are in Nigeria, Togo, and everything. But you that are Ghanaian, that you are here, Kassan, Kassan, you are among your own people. Nobody come, miss way. Miss your way and say, ah, I'm looking for comfort by mistake. Hey. Hey. Frank, who is your friend? No. It's by the reason of church. Hey. Who should we call? Give us name of your friend. So that if there is anything now, we can talk to your friend. Talk to your friend. You know, they say something normally say, talk to your friend. Though. Talk to your friend. Say from today, I will have a good friend. From today, I will show you my friend. Say neighbor, from today, I will show you my friend. At least let them come and greet you. When they come, they sit beside you. They sit beside you. At least we know that you come with this person. This is your friend. Oh, I used to bring somebody. I used to come with somebody. If you can sustain relationship, they would have been here with you. I used to get no be property. I get before no be property. Show us the one you have now. Oh, when I was in primary school, ah, they know me. I used to get friend. Now you have gray hair. You are still talking about primary school. Show us your. Friend. That is the, to tell you that you are practicing Christianity. Jesus went about doing good and he had many friends. If you have been doing good, you have friends. If you have been good yourself, you have good friends. Invest in somebody. Support somebody. Take care of somebody. The world is be around you. Before you wake up, they are already in your house. We are going to church with you. This is my good friend. This is my good friend. We've been doing function in this church. I know some people, and I'm going to mention their name. They have never invited one person. No friend can follow them. Come. You want me to start mentioning your name? You are the reason why this church is not full. Because you you cannot, at least his friends and family, they started bringing to church. Oh, I've discovered this church. Oh, it's a good church. It's open. We give hope. We walk in hope. We talk hope. We do hope. Your friend will have heard about it till they come. Hallelujah. Show me your friend. We saw in the Bible. Job, her friend. Two are better than one. Let me give you some few things before we close. 
so that you can know how to keep good friends. Hallelujah, somebody. These are the secrets of keeping good friends. Amen, somebody. Secret of what? Keeping good friends. Number one, do not be selfish. Selfish people cannot sustain friends. The number one secret of keeping friends and good relationship is by not being selfish. You have to know that it is not about you alone, but about two of you. It's not about two. It's not about you alone. It's about what? Two of you. You are the one. If you want to see me, come to my house. If you want to see me, come around. If you want to see me, come around. It will get to a point that people will say, if you also cannot come to us, go away. It's not about you. You are not the only one who have house. Some of you are so selfish. It is only when it's what is convenient for you that you practice with your friend and you think you will keep them. When they see good people that give back to them what they are giving, they will follow that person and abandon you. So one of these reasons why you are not able to keep friends, it's because of a good relationship. is because you are selfish. And you sell meat, join yourself. Maybe only fish. Know that it is about two of you, not you alone. It is about two of you. What is good for the goose is also good for the gander. Don't be selfish. If you are selfish with your sister, Siblings, brothers, family, they would abandon you. So that's what this one is only about himself alone. As for this, as for Kojo, as for Ama, it's all about what he wants. It's all about herself alone. So everybody begins to walk away from you because you are selfish. When you are selfish, you will not be able to sustain any relationship. They will come and go because of your selfishness. Because of your own selfishness. Amen, somebody. Amen. It is not about you alone. It was about two of you. I love you, love me. I give you, give me. I care for you, you care for me. I visit you, you visit me. I check on you, you check on me. Well, I've not seen you, I've not come around. But you know I don't like visiting. Oh, some people even say it. You know me, as for me, I don't like visiting anybody. So if you want, come. You are what? You are what? You know me, I don't like going around to visit people. So those who visit you, they don't have job, eh? They are jobless. So those who visit you, those who have brain, they don't have time to do, they don't know what they do with their time. You are the only one who is big. You are borrow. And before you know, the people start running away from you. Ah, Charlie, it's been long. You come and visit me. Oh, my head busy. My head busy. They are busy with good people who will respect them the way they respect. Hallelujah. Before you know, you have lost it. It is very important that you rule out any selfish act out of any relationship. Whether husband and wife, whether siblings, whether colleagues at work, whether friendship, any form of relationship. For you to keep it, you have to eliminate act of selfishness. You have to know that it is not only you who wash your face down. They, they don't wash their face off. Do you see anybody that wash their face up? Everybody wash their face what? Down. So you should know that it's not about you alone. Am I communicating this morning? 
these are practical things. Your prayer, you pray, pray, pray. You fast, fast, fast. You go to mountain. You go to valley. God is saying that your blessing is in the hands of another person. Have a good relationship and that miracle will come. I, God, I am not coming down. Anything you want is in the hands of another person. Just have a good relationship and you have it. Have a good relationship and you have it. And I keep telling you, it is, you have to look at it very well. Have you been selfish with your relationship? You can't be free with the whole world. At least the people you call around you, your own, you have to show good efforts to show that you are having good relationship. You are not selfish with them. Listen to this. Selfishness is the killer of any relationship. Be it filio or agape. Filio is the love of affection towards one another. Agape is a general love that we have for each other. Whether friends, lovers, sibling, family, or a co-worker. Don't be selfish. Don't take it to be that it's from your own aspect alone. Just be open. Don't be selfish. That's what, that's what nearly ruined the family of Jacob. Selfishness. That because their father, Joseph, has a dream let me tell you, if you and your friend has the same thing, well, it will be boring. The beauty of life is diversification. You have what I don't have, I have what you don't have. Then we now complement each other. You may have money and you may not have wisdom. I may have wisdom, I may not have money. If you are a friend, you... Help me with your money, and I also help you with my wisdom. It makes it beautiful. To not say because you have money, I am the only one who will be always come to you. Do you know that that your money may not save you when problem come? It may be my wisdom that will save you. So I need you. You need me. In any relationship, you must know that. I need you, and you also need me. I need you, you need me. Am I speaking with somebody today? Yes. Not about you. As you are thinking about yourself, think about the other people. Let me go to Brother of Joseph, Genesis chapter 37, from 19 to 20. Genesis 37, 19 to 20. And they said to themselves, the brother of Joseph, here comes the dreamer. Because he said he had a dream and they hated him. Siblings, so these are sibling relationship. Why do you hate your siblings? Why do you have problems with your sibling? Some of you can die in the church praying, but you cannot even have one hour with your family member to have joy together. You can't stand them. If you can't stand human beings, how will you be able to stand God? My family are bad. My family are not good people. My family are not good people. I'm tired of that. You are the one that is not good. I'm telling you, how can everybody be bad and you are the only good person? Oh, as for my family, you have to run away from them. Oh, as for my family, you have to do this. Oh, as for my family, you are in the whole of your family. Father side, mother side, grandmother side, grandfather side. You didn't see good one. Not one. All of them are bad. It's impossible. It is what well, impossible. And they carried Joseph. And they say, let us kill him. And let us see what will become of his dream. 
He claimed he has a dream. And they said to one another, look, here comes this dreamer who said he will rule over us. If your brother become millionaire, won't your family be blessed? But they are so selfish. That is not them. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. The cisterns underground water storage. Then we will say to our father, a white animal kill and devour him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. We shall see what will become of his dreams. He becomes so selfish. If your brother become big in your family, and so what? So you have to say, because it's not the firstborn, so the junior one become great. And Why are you so selfish? Why not look at it that God has blessed our family? Number two, be considerate. That is another key of sustaining the relationship. When you are very considerate. Luke chapter 6 verse 31. He said, do to order as you will have them do to you. Do to others as you have them do to you. Considerate. This thing I want to do to this my friend. This my partner. This my husband. This my wife. This thing that I'm about to do. If the person do it to me, will I like it? Will I be happy if this person do the same thing back to me? People are not considerate. That's why they lose relationship. You do things to others that you wouldn't want them to do unto you. Do unto others what you will want them to do unto you. I have a brother. His wife, the mouth is like a razor. Her mouth is like a razor. Any smart thing, blah, 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 he will be insulting the man. And he said, he's tired of this. He doesn't know what to do. And he went and consulted an elder. What should I do? He said, any one thing I said, my wife has started insulting me. He said, look for good insults and give it back. You will see what will happen. One day they argue in the car. Then this brother look at what is happening. You know there are insults that is from your body. <laughs> Maybe your teeth is too dirty. Or your armpit is smelling. <laughs> or something that he has been managing in your body that he doesn't want people to know. Then when she began the insult, he now carried that big insult and threw it to her. Boom! He said, Pastor, it was like a magic. She went quiet. Mm -hmm. So why will you say that to me? Why will you say that to me? He said, oh, so that thing can hurt you. The one you have been pro 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 all this while. So you think it's not hurting me? He said, no, I now know your medicine. <laughs> he said, from that day, the insult reduced. Because he doesn't know where he will go and release it in the member, in the public. Go to others. So you cannot take insult, yet you are insulting the man all the time. So you know insult is bad, yet you insult him all the time. Do unto others what you want them to do unto you. You have friends, you have relationship, you have, you know, all kinds of relationship. The only way to sustain it, be considerate that what about if it is me? That's the question you should be asking yourself. What about if it is me? What about if it is me? Hello, somebody. Do you like me this morning? <laughs> Before you do anything unto others, think if it is you. How will you feel? That is consideration. Don't just say, I'm angry, that's why I did that. I'm angry, that's why I say that. I'm upset, that's why I say that. Don't do you, you have to analyze. Think before you act. Don't act before you now start thinking. Think before you act. 
many people have destroyed beautiful relationships because they are inconsiderate. They don't mind your feeling. They don't care about your emotion. They don't care about what you feel. It's what they feel is what they do. How they want it is what they do it. They don't care whether they are walking on your head or stepping on your toe. They don't care. What they feel like doing is what they do. What they feel like doing. That's why you need to be careful of some motivational speaker. They say, do what you feel like doing. So if you feel like killing, you just kill. Do you know sometimes you can get angry? I don't feel like killing you the way you are talking. So if all the motivational speaker are telling you, do what you feel like doing. <laughs> don't do what you feel like doing. Think before you do what you are feeling like doing. Because what you are feeling like doing may end you in jail all the rest of your life. May end you in prison. May cause the death of somebody. May cause all kinds of harm. Don't do what you feel like doing. It's a wrong motivational encouragement. Whoever is motivating you to do what you feel like doing, demotivate yourself. Ask yourself, this thing I'm about to do first, is it good? This thing I'm about to say, is it good? This thing I'm about to say, is it a wonderful thing? Think before you act, not act before you think. Concentration is the checkmate of any behavior. Checkmate. When you are considerate, it's the checkmate of any behavior. I feel like doing this, but on the other hand, you think about it. I said, no, it's not good. I can't do this to my friend. I can't do this to my wife. I can't do this to my husband. I can't do this to my boss. I can't do this to this, my friend. If God bless you, don't call your friends lazy. God has just favored you. Don't begin to insult your friend because God elevated you. Don't begin to look down on anybody because God helped you. You don't know tomorrow. Acrobator will know tomorrow. You don't know tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow may be. The thing may change. The game may change. I read a story this morning. There are two friends who are arguing. As they were arguing and arguing and arguing, one friend just slapped the other friend. Out of the argument. And the other friend kept quiet. And he picked a stick. And he wrote it on the sand. My friend slapped me today. And he didn't do anything. And they were going. As they were going, they would have to cross river. All of a sudden, their boats capsized. The other friend that was slapped, he doesn't know how to swim. So the one who slapped him is the one who knew how to swim. Before you know, the one who had to swim jumped into the sea and rescued the friend. And that one now wrote it under the stone. My friend saved me today. Can you now ask him, why do you write the slap I gave you on the sand? And the good I did for you on the stone. He said, I wrote it on the sand so that the wind can blow it away and I will forget. But I want to remember the good you have done for me forever. Remember where I started this message. If you see two friends that were together for 10 years, one has decided to be fool. Assuming that when his friend slapped him, he has slapped that. What will have happened? Be careful. Once you consider it first, it will alight your conscience. Once you consider your action first, it will alert your conscience. That this thing I'm about to do to this, my friend, or say to this, my friend, will it not affect our relationship? Number three, appreciation. I have just five minutes more. 
appreciation. Appreciation is the secret of a well-lasting relationship. It creates a sense of continuity in whatever you are doing. Appreciation is a lubricant of relationship. If there are no engine oil in a car, what happened to the engine? It knocks. But once there is an engine oil, it keeps working. It is. When you don't learn to appreciate others, it becomes like a dry engine. And in no times, it will knock. In no time, it will knock. Learn to appreciate the little things. Learn to appreciate the smallest thing. Appreciate it. Don't ask anybody, what do you do? What do you do? Somebody gave money to somebody as an upkeep. And he asked, ask. one day, two days, he didn't hear anything. And I said, ah, but I gave you money to do something. Why don't you just tell the person to say thank you? He said, that money you gave, is it money? Your mates are giving thousands of dollars to their children. Giving thousands of dollars to their this. So you give 1,000 Ghana City and you are one thank you. So what about the people that give $1,000? What should they be looking for? Then to worship and say you are my Lord or what? If you are the one, will you be motivated to give again? Let's be careful what comes out of our mouth. Let's be careful what, what comes out of our mouth. Learn to appreciate smallest things. Call your friend and tell him that. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being my sister. Thank you for being my mother. Thank you for being my father. Thank you for being my pastor. Thank you for being there for me all this while. Thank you for being my member. Appreciation. Appreciation. Look back and see what people have done for you. If you appreciate others for the little things they do, they will be motivated to do bigger things. Look at the story of David and Goliath, uh, David and Jonathan. David and Jonathan, look at their story. Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. David said, Is anybody left in the house of Saul and house of uh, Jonathan that they may have mercy for Jonathan's sake? Because Jonathan has shown compassion to David. When David gets to the throne, he looked back. Who helped me to get here? Who helped me? Who helped me? Some of you, you can speak English today. If there was a teacher that teach you how to speak, have you ever remembered that teacher that teach you how to write? Do you remember that teacher? Do you even know the name of the teacher? Hey, he's doing his job. But who is benefiting it today? Some people have been there in your life. You didn't jump down from heaven. If you become somebody, some people help you. Remember them. Show appreciation. And the relationship will be smoother. Number four, truthfulness. Stop lying. Lying is a killer of any relationship. Some of you, you can lie without blinking eye. This is how your lie will open. And you are lying. Even lie detector cannot catch you. There is a machine lie detector. If they put it in your system, that's how you will stand being. Because your system has me. You can lie without blinking eye. Mule. Father of Mule. You give them. Give them. Give them. He said, you can lie without taking water. We we'll just be flowing. Wah, 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 wah. One day when they discover you're a liar, you will destroy that relationship. Truth is openness to one another. Truth, being truthful is to be open to one another. It's openness to one another. It saves unnecessary tension in any relationship. 
It saves unnecessary friction in any relationship. When a trust is absent from any relationship, suspicion sets in and relationship is under pressure. And the whole atmosphere becomes heavy. Have you ever worked with people that you don't trust before? When you are around them, you are not comfortable. The atmosphere becomes heavy. You can't even trust them. You yourself, you don't, you don't know whether what this person is telling you is truth or not. Suspicion becomes high. When you say good morning, before they answer you, they look up. Is it morning? Before they answer you. Stop lying to one another. Stop lying to your friends. Stop lying to your friends. Because when the trouble comes, it will expose you. I was watching some social media or something. Two friends. One friend was about to eat. And his friends knock on the door. Go, go, go. When he's seeing he quickly hide the foot under and close his leg like this. Oh boy, I haven't eaten. You know. Ah, me too. There's no food in this house. So there's nothing and everything. Not knowing that where he hide the food, there was a dog there. So as he passed the food, the dog think that he has passed the food to him. The dog finished the food. <laughs> One woman was watching and started laughing. <laughs> Say, ah! At least it would have been better for two of you to eat the food than dog to finish all the food. Where the friend now left, and I said, let me bring the food. Hey. Liars. You will, offend, you will cause harm for yourself and harm for other people. Mislead people. Why? And lastly, forgiveness. Number five, forgiveness. That's the, five, the fifth secret of keeping a lasting relationship. Know that no human being is perfect, including yourself. No human being is what? Perfect, including yourself. You are not perfect. No one is beyond faults and mistakes. Therefore, make provision for error, offenses, and forgiveness. Make provision ahead that this my friend will offend me no matter how close we are. But I've already made up my mind that before you offend me, I've already forgiven you. Bible says, while we are yet sinner, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. God has already sacrificed his son knowing that you will commit sin in the future. Before you commit sin, I have sent forgiveness ahead. If you don't learn to forgive, you will not have friend. Because there is no friend who will not hurt you. Just like you two will hurt your friend. So the only thing is that we just have to learn to forgive. Learn to forgive. Make provision for mistakes, offenses. And forgiveness in any relationship. Man and God relationship is full of ups and downs. And that is why God made provision for forgiveness. If God Almighty in his finished wisdom knows the importance of forgiveness. And he makes room for it in dealing with us. Therefore you too must make room for forgiveness in any relationship. Don't expect your friend or partner to be perfect. Don't say, I am too disappointed in you. I don't know about you, but me, there is nothing anybody would do that I am too disappointed. Bible says, Jesus knows all men. I already know you are a woman being. There is no way our friendship will be that one day we will not have issue. Maybe you will make mistake. Maybe I will make mistake. But if I want to keep that friendship, if I want to keep that relationship, I must learn to forgive. Unless it's something that is leading to death or destruction. 
or broken down beyond repair, then you can now say, I am going, but I forgive you too. And the same thing is what we see in the story of Joseph. First one, they are selfish about him. The last one, Genesis 50, verse 15 to 21. And when Jacob died, the brother of uh, Joseph gathered and wept on him, thinking that they would do them evil, now that their father is gone. They thought Joseph would now repay them for what they did. But Joseph said to them, Am I God? Give me 50, verse 50. He said, Am I God? Why should I? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for evil. Is that first? Give me the. Mm -hmm. When Joseph brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph carry a grudge against us and pay us back in full for all the wrong we did? And they went to Joseph. Give me, give me 20, 20. That's 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present outcome, that many will be kept alive as at this day. Rise on your feet. You. Thank you, Lord. I need you. You need me. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hold on. We want you to begin to see the importance of needing somebody in your life, needing a good relationship, and ready to apply these five rules. And you begin to have good friendship, good relationship from today. Say, I need you, and you need me. I need you, you also need me. Let everybody begin to see it like that. Let us love one another. Let us make a conscious effort to work to keep a relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Go whisper in my ear. I heard a voice right now. See, I have given them people and they will throw them away. There are some of you, God has planted good people in your life, but this five things that I said has made you push them away. And you keep praying and praying and praying and fasting. Nothing is happening in your life. And you don't know that God has answered you, but it is you that have used your character to push them away. I want you to first of all pray to God that Lord, any relationship you've given me that I've used my attitude to spoil, to destroy, forgive me. Ask for forgiveness right now. Lord, any relationship you have given me that I've used my attitude, that I've used my behavior to spoil it. Father, forgive me. Holy Spirit, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Daddy, forgive me. If you don't ask for forgiveness, God will not give you a new one. It is when you feel sorry for what you have done that they will plant another one in your life. Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Father, whatever relationship you have given us that we have used our attitude to destroy, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy on us. Forgive us for spoiling the relationship that you have given us. For not being patient, not being considered, for being selfish, for not being appreciated. For not forgiving. And as a result of that, the relationship has been destroyed. Father, forgive us. In the name of Jesus, guys. Father, we thank you, Lord. Connect this one, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for Jesus.